Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're back with Epic History TV's World War I series and we're in year 1916. So before we start the video, I'm going to start my recording. And it's still zero. Okay, now it started. Anyway, so here we go. We're reading some comments and William Branch, the Red Baron was a fierce and ruthless hero that the Entente honored when he was finally shot down. In the best movie about him, he lands his plane though mortally wounded. Actually, he died instantly and crashed. I don't know much about the Red Baron, but hey, I heard about it and I want to react to it maybe after my World War One series. And I'm I'm just going to read some parts of the comments because um, this video might actually um, be long and uh, I already read them so I'm just rereading re again. Churchill took executive responsibility for Gallipoli but he hasn't operationally responsible. The British slash French fleets failed utterly and then the British army doubled down but failed to take the their objectives on the first day when it really matters because of the navy failure the army never had the element of surprise this was his fear for d-day in world war ii but much of better prepared allied force led the attack and the allied navies didn't try failing first but the british were still luckless i lackadaisical ah oh, god um william branch again it amazes that rational people are after the first six months of all this fun they didn't decide to quit 70s movies nicholas nicholas and alexandra portrayed the czar as well well-meaning but incompetent ironical ironically sorry Rasputin, the mystic who had been adopted by alexandra was the smartest of the bunch but was assassinated asher hungry too many languages, too many nobility. Okay, so Ikevich, quick no on on Russia in World War One. Keep in mind that the re revolution did not come until 1917. Okay, so the things that happened to Ru Russia in this video earlier in the war helped to bring about the revolution later on. Okay, now I know. Thank you very much, sweet Bra Brazy N. You should react to the first crusade by efficacy tv that's an awesome series you should watch yes maybe in the near future um will branch remember is isn't always what these history shorts include what they leave out that's a fact again wow hello thank you thank you very much react to napoleonic war series well yeah um may actually be in the near future too anyway we're back 1916 I'm very, very excited. I hope we finish this video. This, oops, sorry. We finish this video today. I mean tonight because um I'm recording this at night time. And uh, yeah, if you you like my content, give this video. If you like my content, content, give this video a like. And if you want to support my channel, subscribe to the channel. And anyway, World War One, 1916. Let's go. World War I was supposed to have been a short and glorious war. But by 1916, a new kind of industrialized warfare had seen the death toll soar into the millions, with no end in sight. Naval blockades were beginning to cause shortages of food and fuel across Europe. Yeah, to be honest with you, Germany wouldn't win this war. As if um, the only way they, they can win this war if something dras drastically happens to, in the uh, naval blockade. But but um, but n nothing happened. So yeah. Hold on, I'm just fixing my volume. Okay. While thousands of women had entered the workforce, replacing uh -huh. the men sent to fight in their millions. My God, All sides were preparing for a long war. But the Schiffen plan wasn't really 
a plan for a long war it's actually just a, for a short war they have to just uh, pass through uh, pass through uh, uh, you know, Belgium and try taking Paris and after that if they knock out France and even um, Britain they will face the Russians but it turns out nope that wasn't it war of attrition Ooh, okay the war has raged for a year and a half as the Allies continue to battle the Central Powers recently joined by Bulgaria at sea the British maintain their naval blockade of Germany, preventing the import of food and other vital raw materials. Germany has retaliated with a U-boat blockade of Britain, but has to limit its attacks to avoid provoking the neutral USA, whose citizens have already been caught in the crossfire. Yeah, the bombing of On the Western Front, French, British Germany, and Belgian sorry. troops are dug in opposite the Germans. The Both trench sides warfare. trapped in the bloody stalemate of trench warfare. On the no eastern Man's front, land. the Russians have ended their long retreat and stabilized the line, but their army has suffered huge losses. On the Italian front, Italian troops have launched a series of costly, unsuccessful attacks against strong Austro Hungarian defenses. Yeah, to be honest with you, the Italian front is very underrated in this war. And here we go talking about um, Serbia. While on the Balkan front, the Central the Powers Balkan have front. overrun Serbia, whose army is forced to make a bitter retreat through the Albanian mountains. Hmm. Now, on the 5th of January, Austro-Hungarian troops attack Montenegro. They are delayed at the Battle of Mojkovac. But three weeks later, Montenegro is forced to surrender. On the Caucasus front, the Russians launch a surprise winter offensive against Ottoman Turkish forces. Six weeks later, Russian troops occupy the city of Erzurum. In April, they capture the Black Sea port of Trebizond. First of all, the Ottoman Empire is very unstable um, at this point and this empire was is pretty obviously gonna collapse after the war and and that happened okay meanwhile the british transport two motorboats to lake tanganyika in africa they finally arrive after a 10,000 mile trip by sea and land and help the british seize control of the strategic lake from local german forces the same month, in German Cameroon, German troops besieged on Mora Mountain for 18 months finally surrender to the Allies. It marks the end of the Cameroon campaign. But I heard about someone, um, someone in Africa that actually, um, uh, what you call that? Um, made like uh, improved guerrilla warfare. Imperial, who was that again? Um, Vorbeck, um, Lotto Vorbeck. Oh God, hold on. I'm going to search in Google. I'm gonna search in Google. Hold on a minute. I'm gonna just Lotto Vorbeck. Was it Lotto Vorbeck? If this video takes a long, I'm very, very sorry. I'm just going to uh, let oh, Vorbeck. Paul, oops, General Paul Leto Vorbeck. Okay, this guy. Okay. Paul Emil von Leto Vorbeck, also called the Lion of Africa, was a general in the Imperial German Army and the commander of its forces in the German East Africa campaign for four years with a force of about 14,000 held in check a much larger force of 300,000 British Indian Belgian and per Portuguese troops um, because of him I, I actually 
I actually saw a video about him. Oh, here we go. Um, the Lion of Africa, Paul von Leto Vorbeck. I'm going to react to this after my World War One series because it's he's pretty interesting. He's pretty interesting. Okay. Oh God. Verdun. Oof. I heard about this one. Um, oof. What's happening? Okay. Oof. Oh God. Oh God. Okay. I'm sorry, guys. Sorry. Oops. Okay. Oh God. Paul Leto Vorbeck. Okay. On the Western Front, the Germans unleash a devastating assault on the French fortress town of Verdun. Oh, oh yeah, the battle German of General Verdun. Erich von, von Falkenhayn knows France will defend this symbolic town to the last man. His plan, in his own words, is to bleed France white. I'm sorry. France white in its defense. It is the strategy of attrition. Verdun becomes one of the most terrifying battles of the war. A mincing machine, where infantry divisions are destroyed almost as fast as they can be fed into the line. Wow, that's... In Britain, one million men have already volunteered for military service. But the government realises it won't be enough. Britain becomes the last major power to introduce conscription. That spring, on the Western Front, British troops are the last to be issued with steel helmets. The nature of trench warfare produces a high proportion of head wounds. The German Stahlhelm, the French Adrian helmet, and the British Mark I steel helmet offer limited mm. protection from shell splinters and shrapnel. Neutral pretty, Portugal has been cooperating with the British, which seems to offer the best chance of holding on to her African colony, Portuguese Angola. On the 9th of March, Germany retaliates by declaring war on Portugal. On the Eastern Front, Russia launches an attack near Lake Narok to relieve pressure on the French at Verdun. But First of all, I don't know much about the Battle of Verdun, but I would love for you guys to comment down below any details and um, I would probably react to a video about the Battle of Verdun. It's a disaster. There Russian are 100,000 Russian casualties and the attack fails to divert any German troops from the fighting at Verdun. Remember, um, the army is getting controlled by, was getting controlled by Tsar Nicholas II. In Dublin, Irish Republicans launch an armed revolt against British rule. It becomes known as the Easter, Easter Rising, Rising and is put down people. after six days of street fighting. Mm, I didn't know that. The Arab revolt. Now, he may actually be um, going to talk about um, the Ottoman Empire. And it's pretty obvious that the Ottoman Empire is gonna collapse in just few years and knowing that they he, they joined the war with the uh, central powers central powers um, it's pretty obvious that they're gonna collapse because of the revolts and stuff in the Middle East after a five-month siege British forces at Kut surrender General Townsend leads 9,000 British and Indian soldiers into captivity. About half later die from starvation or disease. Britain wants Arab support in its fight against the Ottoman Empire. So it's promised Arab leaders an independent Arab state after ah, the yes. war. Ah yes, future independence. But now Britain and France... They like, um, kind of the trade them. Um, no, they they promised them an um, they promised them a independent Arab state, but uh, yeah, they betrayed them. Um, they 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 uh, drew the lines of the borders, and still now, because of the lines, the 
the uh, Europeans draw, drawn in the map uh, the Middle East is very unstable secretly sign the Sykes Pico agreement planning after the war to divide the Middle East into British okay. and French zones of control unaware of this deal Hussein bin Ali Sharif of Mecca leads the Arabs in revolt against Turkish Ottoman rule in the Battle of Mecca, his forces seize control of the Holy City. On the Italian front, Austro-Hungarian forces launch a surprise attack at Asiago. Ita I actually saw a video made by uh, Extra Credits about um, the Europeans uh, drawing the lines for the borders of the Middle East and I wanted to react to that in the future. Italian defences give way, Austro-Hungarian troops are poised to break through into northern Italy. The only battle that isn't that in month Sanzo, in the North right? Sea, the German high seas fleet clashes with the British Grand Fleet at the Battle of Jutland. In the only major naval battle of the war, the British suffer heavier losses, but claim victory as the German fleet withdraws and does not re-emerge from its base for the rest of the war. Oh, dang, why? The big push. Okay, there we go, another ad, nice. Loving the ads. This World War II, is that MacArthur? What the hell? What you doing there? For the summer of 1916, the Allies have planned major simultaneous offensives against the Central Powers, from East uh -huh. and West. Now they are needed more than ever to relieve pressure on the French at Verdun and the Italians at Asiago. The Russians launch their attack first. On the Eastern Front, General Alexei Brusilov has carefully maintained the element of surprise. His troops break through the enemy lines, in some places advancing 60 miles and taking 200,000 prisoners. This brilliant, though costly, Russian attack achieves its aim, as the Central Powers are forced to redeploy troops from other fronts to shore up the line. At sea, British cruiser HMS Hampshire, en route to Russia, hits a mine and sinks off Orkney. Oh. Among the 650 dead is Britain's iconic Secretary of State for War, Lord Kitchener. Oh. Okay. Three days later in the Adriatic, Italian troopship Principe Umberto is sunk by a German submarine. It's the deadliest sinking of the war with 1,900 lives lost. Wow. On the Western Front, Britain and France launch their major summer offensive, the Battle of the Somme. Ah, yes, the Somme. I heard about this, I don't know much about the Somme, and I wanted to learn more about it. Guys, comment down below for more details, okay? Hopes are high for a breakthrough. But the first day is a disaster. A long Allied artillery bombardment fails to knock out German defences, and waves of British infantry are cut down by machine gun fire as they advance into no man's land. My God! In the space of a few hours, the British suffer 57,000 casualties. My a third God! Of them killed. It's the worst day in the history of the British Army. Jesus. Christ. But more attacks are ordered, and the battle will rage for another five months. Oh my god. Romania joins the war. Oh no. Okay, the Romanian. Encouraged by the Russian advance, Romania joins the Allies. But despite an initially successful advance into Transylvania, Romania quickly faces a counter-offensive from German, Bulgarian, and Austro-Hungarian forces. The Allied force at Salonika tries to support Romania by launching their own offensive towards Monastir. With Serbian troops in the lead, there are small gains, 
but dogged Bulgarian resistance prevents a breakthrough. Mm. Oh. Wow, imagine that Bulgaria being successful than <laughs> Austria-Hungary. What the hell? <laughs> I'm very, very sorry. Okay. On the Western Front, General von Falkenhayn yeah, finally von calls Falkenhayn. off the attack at Verdun. The French yeah. army has honoured their commander, General Nivelle's promise. Ils ne passeront pas. They shall not pass. Oh, they shall but not victory pass. comes at a terrible price. 365,000 casualties. My God. The Germans lose almost as many. Verdun remains one of the bloodiest battles in human history. Oh, God. For his Ooh. defeat at Verdun, Falkenhayn is sacked, and Germany's heroes of the Eastern Front, von Hindenburg and Ludendorff, von Hindenburg, take Ludendorff. command in the West. Mm. Meanwhile, the Battle of the Somme continues. Near the village of Fleur, the British introduce a new weapon they hope can break the deadlock of the trenches. What? It is called the tank. Ah, but despite yes. some small successes, the first tanks are too few in number and too prone to mechanical failure to make any real impact. Yeah, tanks aren't really that, that um, effective in World War One because they're just, they're still not like World War Two type of tanks, but um, tanks in World War One isn't really, um, really good. It's, it's not, it just look at that. It's not really, like the tanks in World War II, and besides, they're easy, easily to get hit by um, artillery, um, by the uh, artillery. So that's why tanks weren't used that much in World War One. And guys, comment down below more details about that. On the Eastern Front, Russia's Brusilov offensive comes to an end. Casualty estimates vary wildly, but it's clear both sides have suffered catastrophic losses. Mm, one Neither million. the Russian nor the Austro-Hungarian army ever fully recovers. 1.4 million, my god. On the Italian front, heavy fighting rages throughout the autumn. Wow, As Italian eight forces battle, make repeated costly assaults Sanza, against Austro-Hungarian positions along the Isonzo River. The Battle of the Somme comes to an end amid autumn rain and mud. The Allies have advanced 10 miles at the cost of 600,000 casualties. Only 10 miles. German losses are about 450,000. The Allies reassure themselves that this is a winning strategy because at this rate, Germany will run out of men first. Meanwhile, disaster engulfs Romania, as the country is overrun by the Central Powers. Romanian forces suffer a quarter of a million casualties. The remnants of its army take position alongside the Russians on the Eastern Front. That winter, Franz Joseph, Emperor of Austria since 1848, dies. Oh God. He is succeeded by his son, Karl. Karl? In Britain, Prime Minister Herbert Asquith is forced from office and succeeded by David Lloyd George. David Lloyd While General George. Joffre is replaced as French Commander-in-Chief by General Nivelle. My God, there's a lot of changes in 1916. Wow. Okay, now you can see a lot of changes of personnel. And um, now, yeah, this emperor, emperors. My God. I actually saw like a mod in Hearts of Iron 4, Karl, is it like, is he Karl the first of Austria-Hungary? Because in, in the Hearts of Iron 4, 4 mod, it's a mod, it, it's a mod about what if the Central Powers won World War 1. And it is pretty interesting, it's called Kaiserreich. If you guys want to, uh, uh, what you call that? Um, to know more about that, I would probably react to a video about about the Kaiserreich. Um, I actually saw a video made by Alternate History Hub. So yeah, just wait. Who promises victory through bold, aggressive action? 
Amid the comings and goings, okay. US President Woodrow Wilson's attempts to mediate a peace settlement come to nothing. The savior. Either side is willing to make concessions. The savior himself. Epic history team. Anyway, my goodness. Wow. That was fantastic. I'm gonna end my video in here. Oh my god. Okay, guys, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos like this. 25 minutes? That's cool. So, see you in the next video. Goodbye. It's now year 1917. Goodbye.